This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're taking the T-Track module that we built last week, and we're turning it into this. Welcome back, everybody. First of all, let me kind of address my backdrop. So, um, a few weeks ago, my wife, who is awesome, said that she did not no longer need her office from working remotely throughout the pandemic because she was working at home. So we could swap offices. Now, my office was actually in our loft um, at the top of our stairs, and I really couldn't do much in it other than have my desk and a few other things in it. So. Uh, hers was in our spare bedroom because she worked at home a lot more often than I did. So when this all transpired, she said, hey, do you want the spare bedroom for your office? Which I, of course, said yes. And I said, can I build a train layout in there? And she said, yes. So we are now in my new office slash train room. And... I'm going to go into more detail on what's going on that on this in a couple weeks because I actually didn't plan on being in here just yet shooting videos, but the bottom line is you guys know I shoot my videos out in the garage and it's hot right now. And I mean, it's really hot. No amount of fans or waiting for it to cool off got it cool enough to really be comfortable shooting in there. And there was no real way to put air conditioning in there um, without a lot of expense. So I was just kind of dealing with it until the weather cooled off. But it's just been so hot. And I just decided, you know what, I'm moving up here anyways. I might as well go ahead and start shooting videos here. But I'm going to actually do an explainer video of all the changes that are coming on in a couple weeks. But today, I am going to be detailing this T-Track module that we built last week. It's going to be kind of an informal series that uh, I'm going to be starting them. It's going to be called Small Scenes. And I really want to do this because I love uh, modular systems for people, especially that don't have the space for a big layout. Um, this is a great way to really uh, get involved in the hobby and being able to do anything, especially a modular standard like T-Track right here. Um, but yeah, we're going to detail this. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be doing for this scene is we're going to have a single kind of country store looking building, which is actually building two from my Etsy shop. And we're going to have a road that goes across a grade crossing that we're going to make ourselves. The first thing that we need to do is we need to mask off our track because we're going to paint the entire module a shade of brown that looks like the ground that I'm trying to mimic. Now it's time to paint. I'm going for my usual interior latex paint and I'm using a darker, richer brown color as you can see right here. And we are going to paint the entire module including the front and back fascia. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that our paint is nice and thick and if you're still not getting your result on the first coat, you might wanna go for a second coat. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the painter's tape from the track. It's okay if you got a little bit of paint on the track. That's not really going to mean that much, especially if it's right at the bottom. It may actually help it blend a little bit better depending on what you're doing. But then we need to paint a little strip in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mask off the track again, leaving that area exposed so that we can paint the middle in between the tracks. If you're using a double section of Kato Unitrack for your T-Track module, you really won't need to do this. Once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and let that dry overnight. Now that our paint is dry, we can see that we have a nice flat color. I'm gonna go ahead and place the building roughly where I want just to figure out what's a good spot for it. I want this to look like one of those uh, country stores that has been around for a long time, doesn't have sidewalks or anything around it, so it's gonna have some gravel around it as well. So we need to get a rough spot of where this is going to go, because this is gonna be the basis for all of our scenery. It's gonna be kind of centered around this building. 
Now to attach the building to the module, we're just gonna use some white glue around the base and that will be more than enough to hold it down to the module. For the roads, I'm going to be using some foam sheets that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I'll put a link to some on Amazon in the description below. This is one of my favorite little methods for doing roads quickly. You just gotta be able to do the edges right. But this can yield good results if you treat the foam correctly. It's a great way to get a nice, flat, uneven looking road surface fast. I take a couple of cars just to get the rough size of what I want for the lanes and how wide the road should be. I then cut the road to size on the width and then the length and I cut each section so that I can make the grade crossings as well. I attach these sections of road with white glue as well. Now you'll notice I didn't do the spot in between the tracks. I'm gonna do that a little bit differently later on. Now it's time for ballast. Because it's Kato Unitrack, we do have the, the ballasted look of the plastic, so I'm not gonna ballast all of the track. You see this a lot in uh, T-Track modules. I'm just gonna ballast the base of it. Now the ballast I have is not the Kato ballast that they provide, because that is a little expensive, but it still works all the same. So I'm just gonna be ballasting right along the base and a little bit up the sides of the roadbed. My favorite technique for ballasting Kato Unitrack is to kind of pour it in the general area of the roadbed after I put the glue down to hold the initial layer and then kind of sweep it in place and let it pile on and just kind of work it until I get a good slope on it so it looks a bit more natural and then I'll sweep away any spare little uh, flecks that are left over. Next up, it's time to put our trees in place. Now normally I do this later on, but normally I'm also working on extruded foam. This time I'm working directly on wood and these trees have bases. So I'm taking the bases and I am gluing them directly on there so that I can spread everything around and blend the bases into the greater scenery. Now you also know that I love to make my own trees a lot of times. This time I'm not doing that. It's simply because it is a smaller project and the cost savings isn't really that much when you're doing something this small. So I just bought a $10 pack of trees at Hobby Lobby when I picked up my uh, mats for the road. So you can find these just about anywhere. I'll link some on Amazon in the description below. Now it's time to put on our scenic base. Again, we're gonna be blending this against the bases of the trees, but we're gonna start off here in our smaller sections. Now, what I like to do is I put down white glue to hold down the initial base, and then I'm going to be spreading some Scenic Express dirt. This does a really good job of filling in any gaps that you may leave from ground foam so that your paint isn't as exposed. Even though it is a very earthy color, I still like having the dirt beneath it before you get to the paint. And we spread this carefully, but also we don't have to try to get every single inch of the real estate that's there. Now, one thing I love about Scenic Express Dirt is that it's a great weathering tool as well. And this is a very simple way 
to give some age to these foam sheets that these roads are on. And I just take some Scenic Express dirt and I sprinkle it across and then I take a brush and I just kind of brush it in the direction of traffic so that it looks like traffic's been driving and kicking up some dirt and has made the road pretty worn out there. So um, I'm not gonna line this road because it's an old country road supposedly. Um, so this really helps age the road out and give it a little bit of detail. Now, before we get into putting the dirt on the rest of the scene, I want to put the gravel around the building itself. And I've got a slightly different product for this. I picked up some gravel. I'll link some in the description below, but I'm going to go ahead and put some white glue around the base, being very careful not to get too much on the actual building because we don't want the gravel stuck on the building itself. But this is, will help it look slightly different than the surrounding ground cover. And the reason that I like to put the gravel on before I put the scenic base is because typically Typically, you'll have dirt work its way back into man-made areas like this rather than the other way around. So if I get a little bit of dirt on top of this, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's just going to make it look more aged. I use a similar technique to what I do with uh, road bed ballast, uh, but I just uh, try to get it on the areas where I put the glue because I'm really just have the glue exactly where I want all of that gravel. Now I can repeat my process of putting the dirt down for all of the areas around the trees. And again, I wanna try and get it as close to the trees as I can and get that dirt all around so that when I come in with the coarse turf that I'm gonna be using for the greenage and the foliage on the ground, it will just look like it's kind of grown over some dirt and it'll look more natural. Now it's time to put our coarse turf down. And I really like using coarse turf for this kind of material. Now, this stuff is absolutely fantastic because it still clumps together kind of in a bushy uh, way. And we're not going for clean landscaping here. We're going for kind of overgrowth, natural. Literally, the only thing they've done is put the road, put the tracks, put the building here. Everything else is as natural as it's always been. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna kind of take these clumps and spread them out across the top of the dirt and we're not putting any glue on above the dirt we're just going to spread these out across we'll worry about gluing it down later now you'll notice as I'm going through this I'm making sure to sweep the road clean I've done the amount of weathering that I want a few other things I, it won't be too bad but I've got some other plans for blending in the road and uh, I'm just trying to keep it just just the weathering that we've done so far on it all right, so now it's time to seal in all of the ground foam and the dirt and everything. And I'm gonna do this with the classic model railroading and model scenery technique, which is to soak it with some isopropyl alcohol. In this case, I'm actually just using 70% isopropyl alcohol. Some people say use 90. Um, I've never had a bad result with 70, but I've also used plenty of 90% as well. So I'm gonna soak this entire ground cover area with isopropyl alcohol. Don't worry too much if you get it on the foam uh, bed. Um, this is a worry if you have a painted road because IPA can strip paint but well, with a foam bed it's really not going to do that much um, you can try to wipe it off um, it, it'll dry out just fine it may leave a little wet spot that may look like some little additional weathering so but make sure you get as much of the scenic area soaked as possible the last thing that we need to do here is we need to soak it with our 50-50 white glue water mixture. If you like using official scenic cement, you can do that as well, but I'm just gonna be soaking it here with a 50-50 white glue water mixture. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna soak in and it's gonna even out. Because we put that isopropyl alcohol on there, that's gonna help break the surface tension on top of these things and let the glue seep into everything. And that's really important for a T-Track module. It's important for just about any model, but especially T-Track models because you know they're going to move around and you want everything as secure as possible. So you're going to be getting this glue in as many places as possible. And you're going to try to get it to make sure that it soaks in evenly. 
Now, one of the things that I will do, and this kind of helps because sometimes when you put the IPA and the scenic cement mixture that you've made on there, sometimes it can kind of push down any of the uh, foam that looks kind of bushy. So I like to sprinkle a little bit more of the coarse turf and the coarse ground foam on top of it so that it gives still a little bit of a bushy uh, texture to it. So you're gonna let that dry overnight. Once your scenic cement has dried overnight, it's time to blend that road in a little better. You can still see that we still have some lines that are very clear that kind of burst the illusion. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use some very dark green foam. And this is a very great for emanating bushes. And what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna draw lines down the sides of the roads. And we're gonna plug in just little clumps of these bushes along the side of the roads. This isn't the most realistic looking thing, um, but uh, it looks really, really good. And it definitely keeps the illusion alive. And plus it kind of shows that maybe the road isn't the best maintained and it's starting to overgrow just a little bit and needs, uh, and needs a DOT to come out there and do some work on it. So now that we've done all of the other work, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the little inserts for the grade crossing in the middle. And what I'm gonna use there is just some simple black construction paper. We're gonna cut it to size, and then I'm gonna put a white little bit of white glue down the middle, and we're gonna press it down in place. The one reason that I like doing this is that it's going to have the least chance of interfering with railroad traffic that goes across it if you put it in properly, especially if you push it down. It's not gonna be high enough to really mess with the wheel flanges. You just have to make sure that it's all glued down evenly. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a roof in on our building. Now this building's actually been sitting on my shelf in display for a while and it hasn't had a roof and that's why I chose to use it. So what I did was actually took some more of the foam and I cut it and you'll also know that it has, notice that it has that insert in it as well, which will help from looking straight through it. But, but I cut the foam to size and make sure it fits. And then I put a little bit more white glue on there and glue the foam in place. Next up, I'm gonna put some railroad crossing signs right here. I uh, got these from Titchy Train Group. They're some of my favorite signs to use. I'll put a link in the description below to these. They make some fantastic signs. But basically, I've got these bushes right here, and normally if I had foam, I'd put a little hole in there, or I'd take a, a pin vise and drill a hole. But since I have these bushes, I'm just going to stick it in the bushes and see how well it holds, and it does hold, and uh, I'm just gonna let it dry in right there, and it should hold just fine. Next up, we're going to put a couple of figures talking outside of the store, just kind of chit-chatting, uh, shooting the breeze right there. And until they dry, I'm going to use these little miniature clothespins to hold them in place. I'll link those in the description below. I'm going to put two people right here. I'm going to put a little bit of extra glue so their feet kind of get cemented in right there so they don't move at all. Um, but So there's two little people. Uh, it's little details like this that really help out when you're trying to sell a scene like this. And last but not least, I'm just gonna take a few cars and I'm gonna glue them in place. These are just some cheapo cars that I got from Eve Model that I've had um, in my scenery tub uh, for a while now. And I thought that they would be just a great little addition to this. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue those in place, one waiting to cross and one kind of a little further back. And that is everything. So let's take a look at some photos that I took of this. And I actually took this module outside just to kind of show what it looks like and what you can do with a little module like this. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and putting this into some real sunlight really helps with the realism of this. So I'm very happy with this module. I'm hoping to do more of them in the future. All right, so that is the T-Track module. I'm personally really happy with it. This is definitely not the last T-Track module I'm going to be building. These small scenes, I think I'm gonna keep doing them at the uh, T-Track standard so that I can connect them up, but it also gives me a way if I want to down the road run some trains. I'm gonna be able to probably a storage cabinet for things like this. Um, but yeah, that is the first, uh, I'm calling them small scenes. So be on the lookout for more of those. It's gonna be informal. I don't know how often I'll do them, but um, I'm gonna see how small I can get um, in terms of depth while still making a good scene. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They're listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. A lot of cool things. They actually knew about this move. 
Um, I'd actually told him I was going to be showing you when I told you I was going to do a detailed video of this, but the weather has kind of forced me inside otherwise. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Hey guys, guess what? I made it through a whole video without any bloopers, so I gotta run my no blooper video today, which is basically me saying thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you like what you saw today, be sure to click that like button, and if you're here for the first time or you haven't subscribed already, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of fun here, and we've got a good community of support around here as well. You can also leave a comment if you have any questions. I also have my email in the description below, so thank you guys so much for watching.